and she asked me to paint this ceiling. I didn't know how, so I went to our new learning library. Anything you want to learn, painting, business, investments, anything you want to know how, your library can now show you how. Finished. Very good, Michael. Now be an angel and do the walls. Walls? <laughs> I don't know how. For more know-how, visit the new Learning Center, now open at your public library. It's 27 a.m. and most of the big city is still asleep. Or oh, there are a few citizens up and working. streets properly adorned, the big city is ready to face the day. The city is awake, and most of the citizens are washing. And at the city reservoir, things are beginning to happen. Six million gallons since 6 a.m. Six forty five AM. The water level is dropped at the Stacy Park Reservoir. Orders come to step up the pumps. Two hundred and eighty three million gallons a day, sixty five billion gallons a year, year in, year out, every week, every day, every hour. The big city provides water for its people. From the great river it comes. Water carrying tons of mud. Too thick to drink, too wet to plow. Mixed with soil from the Dakotas. Driftwood from Minnesota. Fish spawned in the Missouri and the Ohio. But the city must have water, pure water. So it's tons of chemicals. Lime, sulfates, chlorine, ammonium hydroxide. 200 million gallons a day. 65 billion gallons a year. The city provides water for its people and for its factories.
Thirteen hundred miles of pipe feed the big city like the veins of a huge giant. And the heart of the giant never stops. Night and day, the pumps at Baden and Bissell's Point set the pulse of the city. Water for the factories. Water for chemicals. Water for the lathes. Water for the steel mills. And water for the foundries. Water for the boilers and furnaces. 8.05 in the big city. Time to fire up. The big city must live on clean water and clean air. So the air, too, becomes the responsibility of the big city. Every day, the skies are watched, the air checked. From this breathing machine, the city sees what is in the air, what the people breathe. Today, the air is safe and clean. Fifteen years ago, it looked like this. Our lungs looked like this. Now, at 8.15 in the morning, we can see the sunlight and the traffic light. 8.18 in the morning, time for a change. With faces washed, dishes cleaned, and breathing the morning air, the citizen of the big city is now ready to face the world of traffic. One hundred and thirty thousand signs and signals, twenty-five thousand new signs a year, six thousand new bulbs. Fifteen hundred miles of streets and alleys to be maintained. Nearly three million miles of painted lines. 23,000 gallons of paint a year. Since six o'clock, 135,000 cars and buses have moved half a million people into the heart of the big city. 8.50, the car is parked, the journey by land is ended. 8.55, time for the city dweller to take to the air. Traveling this way is simple. No stoplights, no speed limit, no no left turn signs. Just life hanging by a string. Life on a string, a pretty tough string, but one that must travel thousands of miles lift thousands of people thousands of times. The city has brought the citizen into town. Now it must see that he rides safely and quickly to his place of work. Every elevator is tested twice a year. The construction plans of every new building must be approved by city engineers. All buildings that are unsafe are condemned. The safety of its citizens is the job of the city. 905, another place of work, the endless, thankless task of keeping house.
By 945, the housewife has built a monument to herself and has created for the city a monumental task. The endless job of keeping the big city clean. Like the housewife they come to serve, the job of these trucks and crews is never ending. Out in the morning, they return a few hours later with the daily waste of the city. Fires of the incinerator must burn continuously to consume the endless waste. Ten twenty five. Ten twenty five. The cultures, the smears, the blood tests have been delivered to the city public health laboratory. They have come from doctors and health centers in every part of the city. These tests will determine communicable disease. The network of prevention must be thorough. Death and epidemic are the great fears of the big city, and the big city must work to prevent them. Rabies control. Rat control. Mosquito control. Milk control. Milk is a critical food for the city's children. It is under constant inspection by the Department of Health. Inspectors cruise the city, gathering samples for the city laboratory. These trips take inspectors hundreds of miles out of state to check the sources of the vital milk supply. Disease does not recognize race, wealth, nor status. City health is the responsibility of the city. Fluoroscope for lung disease. Consultation and treatment for the disturbed. Blood pressure for heart disease. Child care for those who cannot afford. 1255. 1255. And in another part of the big city, the Tiny Tot program is beginning. A happy community is a healthy community. The recreation centers of the big city provide happiness for many people. For the preschool child, there are skills to learn and things to dream about. For the old and the forgotten, there are many useful days ahead. All over the great city, there are thousands who love to play baseball. And you've got to have bases for baseball. And what other wonderful games are there to play when you grow up? Softball, tennis, soccer, boxing, field hockey, or perhaps a picnic at Forest Park and watching some of those funny games people like to play there. Or maybe just fishing with dad.
There sure are a lot of things to do in the big city. But for others, play is all work, like the men who maintain the city's 50 baseball diamonds. 29 soccer fields. 115 tennis courts. Five miles of bridle paths. 27 holes of golf courses. Hundreds of lawnmowers, tractors, and trucks. Thousands of plants, shrubs, trees to keep trim the city's 3,000 acres of parks and playgrounds. But it's getting to be quitting time. Traffic is picking up. It doesn't take long to clear the big city of cars after 4.30. 5.30. Six o'clock, and the city has gone home. At City Hall, the mayor ends a normal day. 8.30 a.m., met with the city councilor concerning the legal problems of the new sewer district. 9.45, approved a bill authorizing construction of a new viaduct on Grand Avenue. 10.30, talked with the director of public safety about new procedures in testing fuel pumps. 11.20, met with City Plan Commission, discussed new rehabilitation project and slum clearance. 12.04, lunch with President of Chamber of Commerce, outlining progress in attracting new business to the big city. 2.30, inspected new airport administration building. 4.35, approved and signed three ordinances, vetoed one on spot zoning. 5.10, answered 10 complaints by Northside citizens concerning dead trees. 6.01, went home. But not everybody goes home at 6 p.m. For some, the working day is just beginning. In the city garages, automobiles and trucks wait to be serviced, wait to be made ready for tomorrow's work. Down the street, business as usual. Every curb and sidewalk of the big city's downtown must be swept for tomorrow. Every night from 11 o'clock, every street, every night 350 city blocks, every night until 6.30 a.m. 10.45 p.m. A time for waiting. A fire has been reported on the northeast corner of 15th and Cass. Pumpers 9, 41, 40, and Hook and Ladder 7 have been asked to respond. There is a fire alarm box in every block of the great city, over 2,000. An alarm just came from box 2413 in the vicinity of 15th and Cass. Pumpers 9, 41, 40, and hook and ladder 7 are on their way. 
25, 5, and 32 are standing by. It could be nothing serious. It could be a false alarm. It's a big one. They need help. fire line. This is the chief. Send in two ambulances. Send in the second, third, and fourth alarm and space them five minutes apart. Second alarm from box 24, 13, 15th, and Cass. Number 25 and number 5 pumper. Respond. Number 2 hook and ladder. And number four and number two hose wagon respond. There's a family inside. Men are going in. A family of five. Two of the kids are okay. The third burned pretty badly. Both parents are missing. destroys long after it has been put out. These children have lost both parents. The city now becomes the temporary parent of these children until a foster home is found. In the big city, 650. AM. Yeah. 